Hello and welcome back to the video darkroom. This time we're going to be talking about the work area. The work area is this shaded area that you can see just at the top of my timeline here. And at the moment it extends right from the start of the sequence right through to the end of the sequence. If you're not seeing this, then you can click on the panel menu and click on work area bar. So you can see now it is not displayed. If I click on work area bar again, it is displayed. If we hover over it, you can see Premiere will briefly tell you where its start and end is and what its duration is. Now, the purpose of the work area bar is to define the area of your timeline that you want to render or the area of your timeline that you want to export when you come to finish and export your video. Why might you want not to render the entire timeline? Well, in this case, I have an area of the timeline that is highlighted in red. That means that there is an effect in here. In this case, it's an After Effects Mogart that does some manipulation of the graphics. So you can see it kind of uses a cloud dispersion to come in and, and disappear. And that is not hardware accelerated, so it's showing up in red on the timeline. And it may be, depending on the complexity of your graphics, they may not play smoothly when you come to play them and you might want to render them. So in that case, we could, we could move the work area bars start and end in to be just the area that we want to concentrate on and then if you look up in the menu under sequence, you can see that if we press enter, it will render the effects in the work area. And if we press shift and enter, it will render the entire work area. So let's press enter. You see that Premiere starts to render the files in the work area, but it only renders the effects. It didn't need to render the bit before or the bit afterwards. It just re rendered the effects. So if you have some effects and you have more complex timeline than this, you may want to just set the area that you're particularly interested in and render that alone. And if you had chosen instead to press shift enter, then in that case, it would render everything that is in that work area. And so if you want to play that, then you could just simply run through it and the graphics has been fully rendered and you can see it's now showing in, in full resolution. This is also relevant if you were to put in um, an effect such as a page peel. So I'll just drop page peel on here and you can see immediately there's a little bit of the timeline that comes up in red. Page Peel is a transition that shows a page turning animation to move from one clip onto the next. And it is not hardware accelerated, so it comes up as red on the timeline. And we could define the work area to be just this area to see how it works in detail. The second way to determine the start and end of the work area is to use Alt and the square bracket. So if I use Alt and left square bracket, it will set the start of the work area. And if I use Alt and right square bracket, it will define the end of it. And if I press enter, we can render the effects in that area. If you don't want to keep those rendered files, you can go up to the sequence menu and you can delete the render files um, for the entire timeline, or you can delete the rendered files just for the work area. So if we do that, delete rendered work area files, you'll see now that that little piece has gone red. If I set the work area to be here, by the way, if you hold down Alt, you can drag the work area to wherever you want it to be, and then just move the end of it out to here. And we can Press shift and enter and render that entire piece. And again, if we want to delete the rendered files in that area, we can do it by choosing that option on the menu. And now everything is back to normal. Just a few more points on moving the work area around. If you hold down Alt, you can move it, as I've said. If you use Alt and left and right square brackets, you can define the start and end of the work area. 
But interestingly, if we just zoom in a little bit to this sequence that is here, and I double click on the work area, it has now set the work area bar to be the extent of the timeline that is currently in view. If I use the backslash key and display the entire timeline, you can see that the work area is just the area that we previously set it to, which was the area that was displayed. And if I double click it, it goes to uh, back to the full area. If we just go back and do that again, let me just zoom in a little bit and I will double click the work area. You can see it's now set to the beginning and the end of the area that's in view. However, if I held down Alt, which shows the little hand, we could move the work area. But if I double click it in this position, it has now, I'll press black backslash to get back to the full area. It has now reset it. So double click sets it to the visible area of the timeline and Alt double click will set it to the entire timeline from beginning to end. That's how you can use the work area to define where you want to render all your effects when you're editing. But when we come now to exporting, you can see immediately that the default option is to come up with the exporting just the work area. You could use the in and out points. You could do the entire timeline that you've got, or you could specify your own start and end. But setting the work area is the default here. And you need to be sure that if you're going to use that, that you've set the work area correctly when you've been editing in the timeline. So it's probably worth noting that if you are not displaying the work area bar, and I can just switch that off by unchecking work area bar in the panel menu, then if you go to the sequence menu, you'll see that the options to render are to render effects in to out or render the entirety of the area in and out. So how the rendering works or the scope of where the rendering takes effect depends on whether you're displaying the work area bar or not. If you're displaying it, it will be set to the work area. If you're not displaying it, it will be set to the in and out points. You can set the in and out points fairly easily by just typing I and typing O. Then a partial benefit of that is that you can type Shift I to go to the in point, Shift O to the out point. And if you want to clear them, you can clear in and out like that. So in and out is an alternative to using the work area bar. Personally, I find the work area bar easier to use and being able to drag the ends of it around as you need it. Just display it again and uh, hopefully you find that useful and you know pretty much how the work area bar works and you can use it in your own video production. If you feel that you got benefit from this video, then please give it a like. It really does help the channel and consider subscribing to the video darkroom and see you in the next one.